Hello and welcome to this edition of White Pack CityCast. I'm Randy Beeler. The Yakima City Council has chosen four finalists for the open Yakima City Manager position. The four finalists will be in Yakima on May 9th for a community reception and then will undergo a round of interviews on May 10th. Three of the four are now serving or have previously served as local government executives in Washington State. The finalists include current Othello City Administrator Wade Ferris, who retired from the U.S. Air Force as a Major General, current Thurston County Manager Cliff Moore, who has also been in charge of individual departments in Thurston County, Mike Jackson, who served as the Spokane Valley City Manager from 2010 until last month, and had previously been Deputy City Manager and Parks and Recreation Director for Spokane Valley, and Ruth Ozuna, who is currently an Assistant City Manager in Brownsville, Texas, and who has previously served as City Manager in Eloy, Arizona, and as a Deputy City Manager and Director of Cultural Affairs in Phoenix, Arizona. Community members will get the chance to meet the four finalists during an open reception at the Yakima Convention Center from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Monday, May 9th, the finalists, which were chosen from a group of 20 applicants, will then be interviewed by the council and a panel of community members selected by the council on Tuesday, May 10th. YPAC will air the council's interviews of the finalists live on May 10th. Those interviews will begin at 8.30 a.m. It is not yet known when the council will make a final decision on who will be the next Yakima City Manager. In order to better accommodate contractors during the busy spring and summer building seasons, City of Yakima building code inspectors have adjusted the hours they work. Throughout the spring and summer building seasons, the City's building code inspectors will be working from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. The City's building code inspectors typically work from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. However, contractors like to get started on projects earlier in the day, especially during the summer, in order to avoid the hottest times of day. The city's inspectors themselves suggested adjusting their schedules by one hour on each end of the day during the busiest building seasons. The idea was shared with several contractors who gratefully welcomed the move. The work hours adjustments will apply to the city's three building code inspectors. Combined, those three inspectors complete an average of more than 7,800 inspections each year. The city's code administration division will evaluate whether or not inspectors will return to the 8 to 5 work schedule this fall. A huge project is underway at the Yakima Airport to improve the way planes move around the airfield and residents in one part of Yakima will have the chance to spruce up their neighborhoods later this month. With those stories, here's CityCast's Ken Crockett. Thank you, Randy. Crews will be busy from now until early September on an $11 million Yakima Airport taxiway improvement project. Columbia Asphalt was the successful bidder for the work that involves repaving and expanding the taxiway to accommodate larger aircraft. The project also includes new LED taxiway lighting, improved navigational signs, and other changes mandated by the Federal Aviation Administration. The FAA is funding 90% of the project's cost, with the remaining money coming from airport passenger facility charges and a state aviation grant. Efforts will be made to minimize the impact on airport operations, including doing work at night and in phases. The only change that airport passengers should notice during the construction activity are new departure times for the early morning and evening Alaska Airline flights to Seattle. People living in an area between Yakima Valley Community College and Davis High School will have an opportunity to spruce up their neighborhoods on Saturday, May 14th. Household items can either be taken to a Dropbox site located on West Arlington Street near Larson Park or left at the curb for pickup by volunteers. Participants are urged to keep recyclable items separate from their household garbage. The free community cleanup is targeting an area that is bordered by Tieton Drive to the north, Knob Hill Boulevard to the south, 16th Avenue to the west, and 3rd Avenue to the east. The event will run from 8 in the morning until 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and additional information will be available on the City of Yakima's website prior to the event. Back to you, Randy. Thanks, Ken. When we come back, CityCast's Sean Davido will give you some tips about how to navigate through signalized intersections when the lights go out. You're watching YPAC's CityCast.
Traffic signals are a critical piece of keeping both drivers and pedestrians safe along busy streets. But traffic signals may not always be working. To let you know what to do when that unusual situation occurs, here's CityCast's Sean Davido. Thanks, Randy. I'm here on Titan Drive where a new traffic signal is being installed, which gives an opportunity to talk about what happens if a traffic signal goes out around town, or if crews are working on traffic signals that are causing an outage. Now, we've all been in these situations, and if you do come to an intersection like this, it is considered an all-way or a four-way stop, and drivers should proceed accordingly. This means as you approach the intersection, vehicles that arrive at the intersection first have the right-of-way. Now, if two vehicles arrive at the intersection at the same time, the vehicle to the right has the right-of-way and should proceed through the intersection. Now, where this can get confusing is at major intersections with multiple lanes and turn lanes, but the same rule still applies. The group of cars to the right that appears to arrive at the intersection first has the right-of-way and should cautiously proceed through the intersection. The next group of cars to the right would go through the intersection and so on. Cars in the group traveling through the intersection that are turning left would need to yield to any oncoming traffic. And if there's a flagger, a police officer, or a firefighter directing traffic, always follow their directions and always yield the right of way to pedestrians. Now most of all, try to be patient and courteous to other drivers. Getting upset or causing an accident only makes the situation worse for everyone. Try to keep your cool and be careful and always try to watch out for the other guy. Also, as this project and other road construction projects kick into gear over the next few weeks, remember to give them a break. These crews are working to improve the situation for everyone. Now, if you come across an intersection in the city of Yakima that has a traffic signal that is not functioning properly, contact the city of Yakima's Traffic Operations Division at 575-6005 or use the mobile-friendly Yakback reporting feature on the city website. If the intersection seems dangerous or there is a serious accident, be sure to dial 911. Randy. We'll send it back to you in the studio. Thank you, Sean, and thank you, too, for joining us for this edition of YPAC CityCast. The City of Yakima provides multiple platforms you can access to find out what's going on with the City Council, City Programs and Services, and more. The City of Yakima website at yakimawa.gov includes information about every division and department in the city, as well as activities calendars, council meeting agendas, and videos of city meetings. The City Facebook page links you to news releases, newsletters, and other important announcements from the City of Yakima. And the City of Yakima Twitter feed makes it easy for you to stay up to date with what's happening in our community, no matter where you may be. Visit the City of Yakima website, find us on Facebook, or follow the City on Twitter. We'll see you on the next edition of YPAC CityCast. I'm Randy Beeler. Take care. For more information on YPAC CityCast, call 575-6092.